conservative new media viewers, Jeremy Lin fans around the world, and L.A. Lakers fans around the world. What's up? It's me, P.F., the Paul F. of the Rio, the NBA expert. We're here to discuss in a long video format the Lakers' 109-102 to loss tonight to the New Orleans Pelicans in Game 8 of the 2014-2015 regular season. With the defeat, the Lakers dropped to 1-7 and seven on the year. Let's quickly go over statistics here. Kobe Bryant, 33 points on 28 field goal attempts, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Carlos Boozer, 16 points, 16 boards. Jeremy Lin, 15 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. 34 minutes of playing time, 4 of 11 shooting from the field. One of three from three-point range, six of six from the free throw line, two steals, one block, one turnover, and his plus-minus was a minus nine, which was the best among the L.A. starters. For the Pelicans, Anthony Davis, 25 points, 12 rebounds. Omar Ashik, 7 points, 13 rebounds. Tyreek Evans, 19 points, 5 rebounds, 11 assists. And the man playing opposite Jeremy Lin, Drew Holiday, 17 points, one rebound, five assist. The overall on this game, before I get into more specifics, was <clears throat> the Lakers played well for a significant portion of this game. They were able to hang tough with the Pelicans for the majority of the game. However, there was a lapse in the team's defense late in the third quarter, early into the fourth quarter, particularly late in the third quarter. New Orleans was able to get on a roll in that period of time, and they kind of never looked back from that. Once they started getting on an offensive roll, they gained confidence, they started making more shots, and it kind of went from there. The Lakers made a comeback late in the game, similar to what they did against Memphis. But this this game was not as close as the final score indicated. The final score was a seven-point margin, but like on a midway through the fourth, it was like a 20-point game. So the Pelicans kind of coasted in at the end. Now, after the game, Byron Scott was ripping the team's defense, particularly the defense of the big men. And look, it's he's got a point. There were times where the big men were not helping the guards out. So the, the Pelicans guard would get past the perimeter defense and literally Carlos Boozer, Jordan Hill, they're just kind of watching the guards for the Pelicans shoot layups. So that is an issue. It is a problem. On the other hand, I thought there were times in this game where the Lakers played very good defense and good team defense, like they were really working hard. But there are issues there, and Byron Scott said he's not even sure if they're correctable, meaning he's not sure if the guys have the physical talent to be able to correct them, the the, the problems. My guess is that he's talking primarily about Carlos Boozer, but um, – from what I saw, Jordan Hill also had some some problems with that as well. Let me just say this quickly. We made a short video about the game earlier. If you want to check that out, if you don't have time to watch this long video, or if you want to watch the short video first, watch the long video later. Secondly, I fell asleep before I made this video. So it's about four hours or so delayed. And I apologize for that. I just, I don't know, my body was more tired than I thought it was. Now, a lot of Jeremy Lin fans are really upset with the number of field goal attempts that Kobe is taking. Kobe is shooting under 40% for the year, which is not good. In today's game, he was 10 of 28, which is about 36%. I said on Twitter following the game that I did think Kobe was taking too many shots in this game. There are times where like in the Memphis game yesterday. There are times where it's difficult for the team to create shots. 
And so you need somebody like Kobe who can create his own shot to make something happen. I thought, though, that in this game, Kobe did it a little bit too much. Not not ridiculously too much, but too much. Maybe five, six, seven times where he, he could have passed the ball off. So, for example, there's times where Jeremy Lin's wide open on the perimeter for a jump shot or a three-pointer, and he doesn't get the ball. And... There was one play in particular where Kobe came down. He dribbled down the left-hand side of the court, and he didn't pass the ball at all, and he shot up a three-pointer, and it was an air ball. So those are the types of plays that people are talking about. And there's this huge gap between Kobe fans and, like, Lynn fans and basketball fans were maybe the Lynn fans and the basketball fans are saying he's definitely clearly shooting too much. He's hurting the team. Guys aren't involved. And then on the other side, you have the Kobe fans saying he has to shoot. The team's not very good. He must do this. Um, it, I, I do think it's somewhere in the middle and it's going to vary from game to game. As I said, I really didn't have a problem with it in the Memphis game because it worked, and it helped, and they are a very good defense. I do think in this game that Kobe shot too much, uh, like I said on the examples that I just mentioned. So it's – look, this issue has always come up around Kobe. It's it's come up for as long as I can remember him being a, a relevant force in the NBA, which is back to about – 1999-2000 season, something like that. I can remember clearly where there were discussions in the 2004 NBA Finals where Shaq, they were, the Lakers were facing the Detroit Pistons. Shaq was shooting like 60% in the Finals, and Kobe kept shooting, kept shooting, kept shooting, kept shooting. And he shot like, I don't know, like 37 or something percent for the Finals, and there were people that said that Kobe shot the Lakers out of the finals. So this is this has always been a thing around him. Uh, is it going to change? Probably not. And, and this is part of what I've said to Lynn fans. Kobe's going to play at least two more years. And if Jeremy's on the team, you're going to get some of this. I mean, it's... I, I do think that people will continue to point it out, though. And so... The Kobe fans will say Kobe's leading the league in scoring, and it's incredible what he's doing at a 36-year-old, and the team's not any good, and so he has to do this. And maybe Lynn fans and basketball fans will say the opposite, which is the team would play better defense if they could take more shots and guys were more involved. How can you – guys are shooting a better field goal percentage than Kobe. They should get more shots. This is – this is this is what it's going to be, uh, especially if the team not playing particularly well or not winning. Then it's I think you're going to get a lot of this. So, um, I, I, like I said, we'll just have to see how it goes game by game. I do think Kobe shot too much tonight, and uh, I think that if he would have made a few more passes, it could have helped the team. On the other hand. Kobe got on a string, I think, in the first half where he hit like three three pointers in a row. So that works. It's it's tough. It's it's a tough balance. Kobe is far and away leading the league in field goal attempts. So he is putting up a lot of shots. So it's it's um I don't know. It's it's a tough discussion. It's one that, that's probably gonna be here for the entire season. And there will be people could be, you know, Henry Abbott of ESPN that doesn't seem like he's a big Kobe fan who will say Kobe only cares about his points. Kobe wants to lead the league in scoring. Kobe wants to make a point and he's shooting too much. So if this continues like this, then there will be more conversation about it from outside the Lakers media. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Now, the overall for Jeremy in this game, 
Oh, let me let me say one thing. Other thing overall about the Lakers. What I did like about the Lakers in this game is they never gave up. They just had that lapse in in late in the third, early in the fourth, which kind of put them in a bad spot. But the team kept playing and they kept fighting even after that. So I like that. That was good to see that they never quit. They kept going. And I liked that I saw that. For Jeremy as an overall, he had a good game. He was able to outplay Drew Holiday in terms of efficiency numbers. And he he himself did not quit. He had some tough moments in this game. And late in the game, Drew Holiday was kind of trying to go at him a little bit. And Jeremy hung tough. Drew's efficiency for this game was 15. Jeremy's efficiency for this game was 18. So the larger number is better. And they both played the same number of minutes, which is 34. So Jeremy was able to do well on the road, which, of course, has been part of the criticism of him. He was able to do well in a back-to-back, which if you look at Jeremy's career, that's been an issue for him before. And he was able to keep his focus and concentration and competitiveness even when the team was down a lot and the game wasn't as close. And that's been a knock on Jeremy before. It's actually a good thing. He tends to play his best when the game is most meaningful. So sometimes when it's not that meaningful or the game's out of hand, he might kind of just kind of drift a little bit. But he didn't do that tonight. He was very focused and very aggressive throughout the game. And I really like that. And that's that's something that Byron Scott has stressed to Jeremy and that Kobe has stressed to Jeremy. And I thought that he really really came through on that regard tonight. And that was very good to see. Um, okay, let's go over a little bit here, quarter by quarter. I'm not going to go over everything. I'm just going to keep a little shorter. This is getting up late here. Jeremy started out the game with he got uh, his first points of the game where he did a nice give and go with Kobe. So Jeremy passed the ball to Kobe. Jeremy cut to the basket. He got the ball back and he scored on the layup. He actually had a number of blown assists early in this game. He literally had five blown assists in the first quarter. Again, a blown assist is you pass the ball to somebody, they take a shot, and they miss the shot. And if they would have hit the shot, you would have gotten an assist. So Jeremy lost out on five assists in the first quarter that he could have had. He ended up the first quarter with one assist, and he could have had six assists. Um, now, you can't make every single game uh, shot that you take, but he could have looked better earlier on here. Jeremy had a nice pass to Kobe in transition. Kobe ran down the court, and this he posted up in transition, did Kobe. What I mean by that is it's a fast break situation, but the offensive player runs towards the paint to get good position, and they'll block off their man, and Kobe did that. Jeremy found him for a nice little layup. It was a really good play on by both players. Jeremy was aggressive on both ends of the court early in this game, and as I said, he was able to maintain his aggressiveness throughout almost the entire game. He kind of fell into the little lull that the team did early in the fourth quarter. He was not in the game in the third quarter when the Pelicans made their run. But in the fourth quarter, he kind of, you know, the whole team kind of let down, and he got a little bit caught up in that, but not too much. So he was able to maintain his aggressiveness on defense and on offense throughout this entire game. And that was really good to see. He got a steal against Anthony Davis in the middle of the first quarter. So Davis had gotten an offensive rebound. Jeremy, quick hands, took the ball from Anthony Davis. And that was that was a very nice play. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
I did notice something in the mid-first where Jeremy lost his man a little bit. And this is the thing where you he's helping out on defense, and he can kind of lose sight of his man. And he lost sight of, of Drew Holiday for Drew Holiday was able to convert a layup on this. Now, again, to be fair, this happens multiple times in every single game to a number of different players. I'm only pointing out with Jeremy because I'm focused on Jeremy. So I'll see the good and the bad that he does. So it's not just him doing this, but it's something he needs to keep working on. And to be fair, he's worked on it quite a bit. He's much better at this than what he used to be. Uh, So that is good to see. Jeremy came out of the game with two minutes and 53 seconds left in the first quarter. And at that point, the Pelicans were up 21 to 14 and he was substituted for Ronnie Price, as you would expect. The second quarter began. Jeremy was on the bench. One of the things I liked about this game was Xavier Henry was playing with some aggressiveness. Now, of course, Xavier is coming off of knee injury and a back injury. And if you know Xavier's game from the past, he's a very aggressive player. And what's been missing for him in this comeback is the the confidence and that uh, assertiveness. But tonight, he was much more assertive. Now, he didn't score a lot. He didn't get a lot done. But it was good to see him come with force. That He has to play that way. That's the way that he plays. That's, that's his game. So I was happy to see Xavier playing with, with more aggression. Okay. Um, oh, also, excuse me. Let me just say this quickly. I forgot it. Jeremy had his first and only turnover in the game. He was in traffic, and I believe Drew Holiday stripped the ball from him. I didn't see it cleanly because I was taking a note at the time. I looked up, and I saw Jeremy down in the paint, and the ball was getting taken from him. The good thing was that was the only turnover of the game for him. So he was he was he did a good job at taking care of the ball tonight. He had four assists to just one turnover, four-to-one assist to turnover ratio, which is phenomenal. Now, I will say this, though, to be to be honest. There were a couple times in this game where Jeremy lost his focus on his dribble. He, the ball got away from him like maybe two or three times. He has to be careful of that. We've discussed this before, whether it's a confidence thing. Honestly, I think it was a concentration thing. We've seen this in earlier games this year. One of them... In particular, was I believe the first Phoenix game where Jeremy was coming down on a break. He looked over to his right to see where his teammates were, and he dribbled the ball off his left foot. So he just he has to continue to work on his ball handling, and he has to continue to just play calm, play slow, so that he doesn't make these these slight mental mistakes. But again. He only had one turnover. He had the turnover early in the game, and that was it. And he kept confident and aggressive. So this is part of what we're going to see with Jeremy right now, is that he's going to, he's still going to have some downs to go along with the ups as he gets his confidence back, as he gets full confidence, as he comes more into his own game as an NBA player, you will see this, but these are the things to look for. When you see fewer of those instances, then you know he's improving. And he is getting better and better with it, but it's still there a little bit. And this is why guys will get so... They'll get so aggressive against him. Drew Holiday, a number of times in this game, was really trying to get up into Jeremy on when Drew was playing defense to try to get steals. He was trying to, okay, let's see if we can get him scared with his dribble. And so guys are going to do that if they think that you have an issue with it. I've compared Jeremy before with LeBron James in terms of mentality, and I'll do it again. In the 2011 finals, where LeBron struggled greatly against the Dallas Mavericks, I can remember various Mavericks players taunting LeBron James verbally 
Why did they do that? Because the, the, the reputation of LeBron at that time was you can get into his head. And so if people think they can do something against you, they're going to do it. At that time, it was, okay, you can mess with LeBron by talking to him, so everybody's going to talk to him. The rap on Germany is you can – maybe he loses confidence. Maybe his, his ball handling is a little, little suspect under pressure. So guys are going to try to do it, and you have to push them back, as we've talked about before. You have to change that perception and narrative. And I thought Jeremy did a really good job of that in this game. Drew trying to get at him, but Jeremy didn't let him get him. He didn't. He fought back through the entire game and until the end. And I really, really, really liked that. And I can tell you that the coaches are going to like that as well. So that that is good to see. Okay. Um, I did put... In the middle of the second, I put a note says what Jeremy must do. He he is still trying to figure out his game. And I know that sounds strange. I mean, what Jeremy is best at is pick and roll and drive into the basket. That's his game. But to become a complete player, he still needs to work on some specific things. He needs to be able to play at a slower speed. So, in other words, he's great at a fast speed in transition, but he needs to be able to play at slower speeds in the half court. He needs to work on his one-on-one perimeter moves. He needs to work on keeping his mind calm. Don't, don't try to play too fast. Sometimes his mind's working quicker than his body is. And this is where some of the turnovers or the, the dribbling mistakes will come. So just, you know, Calm down, work on your shots, get more and more confident with your outside shot. And so this is still going to take time. It's still going to take Jeremy a couple years, in my opinion, to find his complete game. But the good thing is he's well on his way. But there are times where you can see him thinking. You can see him trying to figure out, what should I do in this situation? What, what move should I make? What should I do? And as he gets better and better, there will be less thinking and more confidence in what he's capable of doing. So as I said, I'm not dissing him here. This is a realistic assessment, and he wants to expand his game to become the player that he's capable of being. So, for example, like in the Memphis game early in the fourth quarter when Kobe was out, and it's Ronnie and Jeremy, Jeremy wanted to score in that that point in time, and I, the team wanted him to score. And so he's working to have more shots and more skills so that he can score more effectively the way that he wants to in those situations. He's still not there yet. He's still, honestly, he's still got a ways to go. But he's getting there, and this is what you'll see with him sometimes where he kind of he is. He's, he's overthinking, or he's making a turnover because he's trying to do a little too much, or he's trying to. He doesn't seem comfortable with what he's doing, and so that's gonna again. That's something to keep an eye on, and I'm totally confident that's going to improve more and more and more, and we're going to see a better and better version of Jeremy. But that's still something that he's working on. That's where he's at as a player. And look, it's good. He's he wants to improve, and he's going to improve. Okay, I put a note, middle of the second, L.A., great defense. They're playing good, solid defense. So as mad as as mad as mad uh, Byron Scott was after the game, there were definitely moments in this game where the Lakers were playing some very good defense. Late in the second, well, Jeremy came in for Ronnie, uh, I don't know, maybe about five minutes left in the second quarter, he had a nice drive to the lane, and he passed the ball over to Jordan Hill for a dunk. That was fantastic. That was great. Soon after that, put Drew Holiday trying to harass Jeremy's dribble. And again, so this is Drew's trying to get up on a mess with his head, but Jeremy fought him off and actually drew a foul. No free throws, but uh, he was able to do it. And I put a note right there, said no punk out time. In other words, this is one of those moments where Jeremy pushed back on a guy trying to mess with him. 
don't let guys harass your dribble. So this was really good. And don't back down. These guys are constantly testing Jeremy to see if they can mess with him. And you got to stand up. And he did a good job of standing up for himself tonight. And I, I really like that. Okay. I put late second near turnover. So this is where, this is one of those situations where it was not a turnover, but he lost a little bit of concentration in a pick and roll play. And I can't remember. There were two instances similar to this. And I don't remember which one it was. But he, I think the ball got away from him slightly on his left hand, but he was able to recover it. So that was good. And yeah, then I made one more other note that just says, Jeremy's got to improve. His mind's working too fast. Slow down, etc. Okay, going into the third quarter, the score of the game was only New Orleans was up by three points heading into the third. So this is a very close game at this point. The Lakers had led for a good part of the second quarter. Jeremy, of course, was starting at that portion. And I put Jeremy's not forcing shots, which is good. So people are saying, geez, he's only shooting eight times per game. He should be shooting more. He, he should, but he's not forcing things. In the past, we've seen Jeremy force a little bit more. Now he's he's doing a better job of being able to function when he's not the focus of the offense. And that's a good skill. It protects your stats look better when you're not forcing shots, but also it's it's important to be able to play that way. Just even if you're the main offensive option, you're going to have games where somebody else is hot. So you have to be able to play kind of in the background. And so Jeremy's doing more of that. Now, <clears throat> to be fair, he was the team was missing him. He was wide open for some shots and some three-pointers, and Kobe wasn't getting the ball, or other guys weren't getting him the ball. So there is some of that. As I said in the Memphis game, the team looked like it was going away from Jeremy a little bit early in that game. And I thought there was some of that in this game as well. Not not a ton of it, but there are times clearly where he was open and he didn't get the ball. Whereas maybe Kobe was cover, covered or double covered and Kobe got the shot or, or somebody else got a shot. Then early in the third as well, Jeremy had this second near turnover. He was trapped on a pick and roll, I believe, coming off a pick and roll. He was double teamed, and the ball got away from him on his left-hand dribble, but it trickled to a teammate. He was lucky on that play that wasn't a turnover. A lot of situations that would have been a turnover, but fortunately for him, it was not a turnover. Then I put calm down, calm down. Then right after that play, Jeremy came down on the other end, and he hit a nice little jump shot. So this is, this is again, he's kind of, when he's having these down moments or the little loss of concentration moments or loss of confidence, then he's coming back strong. And that's how you get beyond the confidence issues. Anytime you have a little play, answer it. And you have a down play, make a good play. And he's doing that more and more and Byron Scott is allowing him to do it. This was part of the problem, in my opinion, in Houston. He'd make one mistake and he's out of the game. Well, then you can't you can't correct the mistake. You can't get your confidence back if when you make a mistake, you're out. And that's I, I'm really happy that Byron is giving him a chance to play through these things. And by doing that, Jeremy's taking the initiative and he's correcting. He's He's coming back strong, and that helps everybody. It helps the team, and it helps Jeremy. It helps his confidence. Then I put that the Lakers went into a zone defense. They went into a zone defense for a couple of sequences, I believe. Um, let me see here. Yeah. Then Jeremy missed a shot. And again, the only negative I could put on him tonight was that he was 4 of 11 from the field. But several players that he missed – he was trying to draw fouls, and this was one of these situations early in the third quarter. He went down the left-hand side of the lane, went up for a shot against Omer Ashik, and he expected a foul, and he did not get a foul call. So 
if he knew he wasn't going to get the foul, he would have put the shot up. And it was a shot that was like blocked. It was it was uh, definitely a miss. Then Jeremy got Drew Holiday up in the air. He basically pump faked up. Drew Holiday jumped into the air to block the shot, and Jeremy was fouled, which was a very nice play. And then Jer- Drew was kind of gave him a like, yeah, you got me. You know, kind of gave him a good pat, make sure he was okay. So that was nice to see. Uh, these guys are going hard at each other, but you could see in that moment that you know, Drew was respecting him and and giving him some uh, giving him some respect. The announcer for Time Warner Cable at this point in the game, Mike Trudell, was then saying that Kobe had the best points per game average for any player in his 19th season, which is true. But this is the type of thing, again, where Kobe's critics will come in and say, well, this is what he's trying to do. He's trying to make these little stats and make records and lead the league in scoring, and maybe that isn't the best thing for the team. So, again, this is the tension that's going to go back and forth with this issue all year. Then I put Kobe. You know, Kobe had a sequence where he had a turnover, and then he had a bad shot. So that was happening. Right after that, though, heading to the middle of the third, Kobe found Jeremy for a three-point make from about 10 degrees left of the top of the arc. That was a terrific play. Hopefully we can see more and more of that going on as the season progresses. Then Jeremy had a nice defensive play where he forced a miss by Eric Gordon at the rim. Jeremy was all over him right at the rim, close to blocking his shot. Let me see here. I'm, uh, yeah. I then again put a note saying Jeremy is staying aggressive, but he should be getting the ball a bit more from Kobe here. So so I thought Kobe was dominating the ball a little bit too much. Then Jeremy had a nice pass to Kobe for a three-pointer. So that was, that was terrific. Again, these two can play off of each other. And to be fair to Kobe, Kobe will gain more and more trust in Jeremy. But Kobe's going to make the decisions. I mean, if he wants to shoot, he's going to shoot. And and there isn't a lot that can be done about that, except, I guess, calling him out in, in, in the media. Jeremy came out of the game. The score was 70-65 to 65 for New Orleans. So they were up by five points. And there was four minutes and 15 seconds left in the third quarter. And... Byron Scott put in Ronnie Price. There were, I know Ido Amir said this on Twitter and other people wondering, why did he do that? I, honestly, I don't know why he did it. I put a note that says, why? What, what was that? Because soon after that, Drew Holiday went right by Ronnie Price for a basket. And then Austin Rivers went right by Ronnie Price for a basket. So I can't really... And this is where the game got away from the Lakers. So, when Jeremy left the game, the Lakers were only down five points. And that was with four minutes and 15 seconds left. By the end of the quarter, the Lakers were down by 13 points. So, I I don't know exactly what Byron was thinking there. Maybe he was thinking, bring Ronnie in to help out on defense or help Kobe out on defense because Kobe's defense wasn't that great at that time. But it didn't work. And so this moment, this is the moment where the game was lost, in my opinion. The late third, early fourth, but it all started late third. And to be honest, it started when Jeremy went out of the game. So that was a turning point. It, It really was. And this is what gave New Orleans their confidence started feeling good about themselves on offense, and it carried over into the fourth quarter and for the rest of the game. Jeremy had had a very nice third quarter. I believe he had seven points in the third, so he was playing well, and he was playing well on defense. So, I look, Byron's making decisions the best that he can. The more that you, more data, more more information you have, then he can make changes going forward so if this didn't work out too well then we will see if if that isn't done again in in subsequent games now early in the fourth pelicans were still on the run and they just pushed it kobe was off the court so this was the 
Ronnie Price and Jeremy Lin backcourt. Ronnie playing point guard, Jeremy playing shooting guard. And, and it's a tough lineup. It, it does miss Kobe. And they're still, the Lakers are still trying to figure out how to make that lineup work in terms of getting enough points. It'll get better when Nick Young can play. It'll get better when Ryan Kelly can play because that Ryan will help the spacing, as will Nick Young. They'll stretch the defense out because they can both hit threes. I, this is what it is right now, and this lineup can struggle a little bit, and this is why I say that as Jeremy improves as a complete offensive player, he'll be able to excel more in these situations, and the team will be able to – he'll be able to, to – keep leads or or minimize runs from the other team okay jeremy had uh, his sixth blown assist of the game early in the fourth year he passed the running price for a missed three the pelicans were now up 91 to 72 so they went up from up 13 now they're up 19 then jeremy drew a foul he then had a very nice play against Tyreek Evans, who's considerably taller than Jeremy. Tyreek's probably about six foot five. Tyreek did a curl play, kind of like a, a hook. He went to the basket, and Jeremy was all over him. And what ended up happening was Tyreek shot a brick off the backboard. I mean, it didn't even hit the rim. It just was bang right off to that, and it led to an easy Jordan Clarkson layup. So as I said, I like the defense that Jeremy played in this game. And once again, he doesn't give up on plays. You can get by him off the dribble because he doesn't have super lateral quickness. And what happens is guys that have thick legs, powerful legs, bigger legs, they tend to be a little less quick on defense laterally moving side to side i'll give you another example of this kevin love kevin love for cleveland power forward he has big legs strong thick legs they don't move as quickly and jeremy's like that jeremy's got strong powerful legs and they're bigger and sometimes the guys with thinner smaller legs they move quicker so it's just it's just a product of the way that jeremy is built but Again, because of his athleticism and speed and determination, if you get by him, the play isn't over yet. Just like as Derrick Rose found out a couple years ago, as Tyreek Evans found out here, and as somebody else was going to find out in a couple moments that I'll describe. So that's good. As I said, you, you, the critics of Jeremy's defense never bring this up, and it's, it's really annoying. Although people like Byron Scott, they know it. If you hear Byron talk about Jeremy's defense, he'll say he never gives up on a play, and that's what he's talking about. You can get by him. He's going to track you down. Okay. Um, then right after that play, this is early in the fourth quarter, Ronnie Price got a flagrant foul against Austin Rivers. And then after that play happened, Byron Scott took Ronnie out of the game. And he put Kobe back in. And Ronnie didn't play for the rest of the game. And my guess, so if you wondered why Jeremy was in late in this game, really late when all the other subs were in, my guess is that Byron was trying to send a message to Ronnie, like, you can't do that. You don't need to do plays like that. And so it seemed like a little bit of a punishment against Ronnie. And I understand it. it he, he didn't need to make that play. He basically... I'm not. I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but essentially what happened was is uh, Ronnie hit his forearm across the forehead of Austin Rivers as Austin Rivers was going to the basket. So it was, it was a rough play. It was a rough play. Okay. Um, Jeremy was a little bit late on a closeout, meaning he had to rotate to help out on defense against Ryan Anderson, and Ryan Anderson hit a three-pointer off of that. To be fair to Jeremy, it probably wouldn't have mattered. Ryan Anderson is about six foot nine. He's a great three-point shooter, and if you send somebody as short as Jeremy against a guy that tall, they, they usually don't care because they know the guy can't block the shot. 
Ryan and Jeremy are friends. They are both from California. Uh, I believe, yeah, Ryan Anderson went to Cal Berkeley, which, of course, is right right where Jeremy is from. I don't know if Ryan Anderson is from the Bay Area, but I, he did go to school there, and I know he and Jeremy are friends. So, uh, look, it was a good play by Ryan Anderson. It was a good play by the Pelicans. Jeremy was a little bit late on the, on the rotation, but he, he gave good effort. He just honestly is not tall enough. Then this is where Kobe hit, excuse me, Kobe had the air ball three-pointer. Now, look, to be fair, the game was pretty much out of control at this point. Still, these are the types of field goal attempts that Kobe doesn't need. That's, it's not helping anybody. So, I mean, there are times in, in this game where he didn't need to shoot some of the shots. Okay. then. Jeremy did not get a foul call. He was driving against Austin Rivers, and I thought Austin clearly fouled him, but they didn't call it. And But I like that Jeremy was staying aggressive here. As we said, the game was out of hand, but Jeremy didn't quit. He didn't give up, and so this goes against the – this helps him with be aggressive, be competitive, be confident. So I really like to see that here. Um, then Jeremy missed a three pointer from 35 degrees right of the top of the arc. It was just a little bit long right after that play. I believe Jeremy saved the ball from going out of bounds. He then passed it to Carlos Boozer, who was fouled uh, and got free throws. I believe that was a really nice play. So like I said, he wasn't, there's about six minutes left in the game. And Jeremy was like, Hey, look, I don't care if we're, we're losing. We're going to stay in this game and finish it strong. And that pays off. That's what we saw after, what was it, uh, the Phoenix game or the Utah game where they lost, but then because they finished well, it carried over into the next game. So Jeremy is taking the Byron Scott lessons to heart, and he's working to, to get beyond his own criticisms of his game. He's not competitive enough. He doesn't care enough, etc. So it's really nice to see this. I put Jeremy Lynn fighting hard now. This is good. Okay. Then he forced a miss by Drew Holiday. So in other words, night, more nice defense. He was then found, but it was no, actually, yes, it was free throws. Jeremy was going to make a pass, but the Pelicans were over the limit. And so, as I mentioned in the last game video, when you get like five fouls in a quarter by a team, any other, that fifth foul and any other foul, the other team gets free throws. That's to discourage teams from just fouling constantly. So you kind of pay for it after a while. Okay, then Kobe bricked a three-point attempt, and I was like, geez. In other words, you don't have to take those shots. Now, again, the game was out of hand, but this is these are the shots that people don't want Kobe to be taking. Then Jeremy had his seventh blown assist of the game. He had a really nice pass to Carlos Boover, Boozer. Boozer was going right down the middle of the lane, but Anthony Davis was there for the block, and i that's why Anthony Davis is Anthony Davis. He is a monster. He's super athletic. He's a great player, and that's going to happen. He's, he's going to block shots. Now, this is late in the fourth quarter. The game was, again, it was mostly out of hand, although the Lakers were starting to come back. Drew Holiday and Jeremy were still in the game, even though some of the other starters, I think, were not. Drew was really trying to go at Jeremy at this point. He was trying to pad his stats and kind of get get, get a little get back or whatever on Jeremy. Drew beat Jeremy off the dribble going to his right and going on the right-hand side of the court. So he was approaching the rim from the right-hand side. He got by Jeremy, and then Jeremy blocked him hard at the rim. I mean, real hard. It was a great play. You'll see it in the the Bly on whoever's Jeremy Lin highlights plays. And this is what we're talking about. Remember, he did this to Mike Conley in the Memphis game. Guys are scared of Jeremy's athleticism. They're scared of his speed on offense, and they're scared of getting their shot blocked on defense. This is why you can't just judge his defense on whether or not he keeps the guy in front of him because he will make plays like this. 
Remember last year he did it to Tony Parker. He's, he does this all the time. And it intimidates guys. It's like when you're facing a really tall shot blocker and guys will alter shots or they won't take shots because they're afraid of the shot blocker. That's what Jeremy does to opposing guards. And you can't underestimate that. That affects... This is probably part of the reason why Jeremy's been a, a good defender or a plus defender two of the four years that he's played. Yeah, you can get by him some, but he can, he'll can he get you. He'll get you on the block shot from behind. And that was a really nice play. And it, it also showed Jeremy wasn't giving up on the game. He was staying competitive. Drew was trying to get at him. And we talked about this before. Jeremy must get better. Don't let the guys punk you out. Don't let the guys make an example of you, make you look like a fool. And Jeremy took the challenge here, and he took it on both ends. It's like, okay, you're going to go at me, I'm going to go at you. I'm going to score some points. And you're going to try to score points with me in garbage time? Okay, I'm going to block your shot. I, I love it. I'm telling you, Byron Scott and the coaching staff going to love seeing this. And they'll see it on a film, and this is what they want from Jeremy. This is what Jeremy needs for his career. It's what he needs for the Lakers, and he's doing it. I, I It's fantastic. I love it. Okay, then I put Kobe's in full chuck mode. He, again, he, he was shooting more here. He was still in the game. Then Byron made the substitutions. He put in four, four bench guys and Jeremy. And like I said, I think this was the, a message to Ronnie, like you can't make fouls like you did that foul. I could be wrong about that, but that was the way that I read it. Then he was fouled, Jeremy was, with low shot clock, two free throws, made both of them. That could, took him from 11 points to 13 points. Then he almost got a steal against Drew Holiday, and then he forced Drew Holiday to miss a three-pointer very badly. I put Jeremy then missed a field goal. Um, he was in a tough position. He went on a pick and roll on the right-hand side of the basket. He didn't want to shoot the ball. He wanted to pass it, but he was forced to shoot it, and it wasn't a great shot. Then again, Jeremy forced another Drew Holiday miss. So at this point in the game, and this was within the last four or three minutes, Drew was totally trying to go at Jeremy, trying to pad his stats and, and get a little – payback or whatever on Jeremy. And like I said, Jeremy took the challenge. He's like, okay, let's go. You want to go? Let's go. This is this one-on-one -on -one stuff. We've talked about Jeremy needs to be good and, and, and defend his turf in these one-on-one -on -one matchups. And he did it and he did it well. Uh, okay. Then he, Jeremy had a third near turnover, but he did not. I, I can't remember exactly what happened on the play. Then he was blocked on the layup attempt, was Jeremy, but right at the end of the game, this was hilarious, this was great, right at the end of the game, literally with about 10 seconds left, and you will see this on the, the highlight from Blyon and, and, and etc. Drew was again trying to go at Jeremy on offense. Drew was on offense. Jeremy stole the ball from him, and I think he dunked the ball on the other end over Drew. I couldn't quite tell because it was, it was literally right at the end of the game. Like the last, I don't know, 15 seconds. It was just hilarious, though. Drew's trying to make a little play. Jeremy stole the ball and then dunked it, I think, over Drew Holiday. So it's like, okay, it was great. This was a little, this was a little game within the game. And Jeremy definitely got the better of it. Uh, Jeremy was very good in the fourth quarter. He had eight efficiency units in the fourth quarter. And Drew Holiday's efficiency units for the fourth quarter was negative four. So this is what we want to see from Jeremy. And I've said this in an earlier video. Even if the game is out of hand or the team's not that good this year, he himself must stay disciplined, take the challenge when these guys are trying to go at you, and establish himself. Because Jeremy's in a contract year. He's playing for his respect. He's playing for his spot in the NBA. And 
forget about what's happening in the game when it's out of control. You just you take care of your man and you do what you need to do, to get your points and get your get back. And that's exactly what he did in in the fourth quarter of this game. And it was great. This is everything I've talked about this. This is a confidence thing. This is a competitiveness thing. This is putting people on notice that they're not going to punk you out. It was fantastic. And because of Jeremy's little surge there at the end, the score got a lot closer. The score went from minus 21 for the Lakers to like minus 7. That's what you want to see. And that can carry over to the next game. I like, look, I, sure, I, of course, I don't like the team being 1-7. and seven, And I, I wish they were doing better. But they did they had a lot of good moments in this game, and Jeremy himself stayed with it, and he had a number of good moments, and I would consider this game a victory for him personally because he played well on the road, and he stayed aggressive, and that's what he needs as an individual player, so it was good to see. Okay, the next game coming up is two days from now, Friday, November 14th, against the defending champion San Antonio Spurs. The game will take place in Los Angeles, and it will be at 10 p.m. Eastern time on November 14th, meaning 11 a.m. on Saturday, November 15th in in Asia, such as China, Taiwan, the Philippines. In the United States, the game will be on ESPN. So we're looking forward to that one-day break after this back-to-back. The team needs the rest. And look, it's a very tough schedule. They've had all these back-to-backs already. They're playing a bunch of road games. Let's not give up on stuff. Let's just hang in there a little bit. The overall, as I said, the overall for the team is, yes, they did have some defensive lapses, particularly the big men. They did. and But they didn't quit. They had some very nice defensive stretches in this game. I do think Kobe shot the ball too much, although some of the the chucking came at the end of the game when it was out of hand. But I do think he should pass a little bit more. And I think that will improve as the season goes on and he gets more confidence in Jeremy and, and others. Jeremy played well. 15 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists. The only negative on him was he only shot 4 of 11, which is, what is that, about 37%. And he did have a couple near turnovers. So he has to keep working on that. But he fought through the the low moments and he finished on a high. And overall, he had a good night. Four assists, one turnover, 15 points. This helps put to bed all of the criticisms of him. And it helps to put to bed the whole he can't play well on the road. He had two solid games on the road back to back against one very good team in Memphis and a a decent team with a lot of potential in the Pelicans. Overall, I'll take it. Look, again, the Lakers were were 10-point underdogs in this game. They weren't expected to win. They have their limitations. They have guys injured. They're, They're still a new unit coming together. This is what it is. But I liked what I saw overall from the team, and I liked a lot what I saw from Jeremy Lin. So that is it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Your comments below, what did you see? Did you see what I saw? Did you see something different? Am I missing something? You tell me. We'll put information in the video description below the video player so you can go check out the highlights of this game and information so you can know how to join the Conservative Media Facebook group and how you can follow us on Twitter. Once again, I am PFV Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. Thanks for watching Conservative New Media. We strive to be the number one Jeremy Lin YouTube fan channel. I hope everybody's having a great night, a great day, wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. Take care, and we will talk to you again soon.